Hey, game makers! Characters. There is so much I want to talk about here, but there is only so much I can fit into a video, so here goes. Really think about what type of game your character is for. Is this character for a massive, character-driven, plot-heavy super game? Or is it something more MMO-esque, where the player character is just there to be the player character? We'll be talking more about the more characterized characters, but just know that you can make a game with a very basic protagonist. Think Pokemon. The main character here is just, well, the player. Other silent protagonists also usually fall into this. And it works sometimes, for the player to be able to project themselves onto the character. But this also limits what you can actually do with them as characters themselves. Characters are an incredibly important part of most games. Even if your story is absolutely terrible, just having lovable and unique characters could potentially save it. Now for me, personally, characters are the basis for all of my games. I can't just sit down and be like, okay, I'm gonna make a game with this story or mechanic, now let's think of characters. Every single concept I've thought up for a game started with characters I've created. When I was eight, I created my most recognizable character, Akira, based on traits I loved about other characters. Kachi was based on my avatar in an online game, and several other characters were based on people I knew. So a few years later, I just decided these characters worked well together and wanted to make a game with them because I loved them so much. Now, thinking of the entire story for your characters is a video all on its own, but that's how it works for me. I think of the characters I want to show off, and how they'd interact with each other, then think of what kind of world they'd exist in, and go from there. The dynamic of your main team is very important. What I mean is, are you going to have a small, focused, static group of characters? Or are you going to have a large assortment of quest friends that join the party for a bit, and then just kind of stay for some reason? Having a small, focused group lets you spend more time developing them. I find characters here tend to form stronger bonds with each other, and the player has more opportunities to grow attached to them. This can also be easier from a mechanical point of view, because you have a much smaller group of characters to focus on. Class systems are good for this style of game. If you've played any Final Fantasy games with class systems, they're usually based around one small party, instead of having lots and lots of characters. In fact, focusing on a smaller cast potentially allows you to have more focus on minor characters in their lives without having the player need to control them. On the other hand, making a large cast gives the player variety, both in terms of personality and mechanics. It also gives the player the ability to pick and play with their favorite characters, if you're allowing the player access to party changing. Though I'd advise being careful with how many party members you have, as it can become somewhat overwhelming for the player, hard to balance in terms of gameplay, and can be hard to have enough time to flesh out each character. I'd also advise not adding characters just because more party members! Because they will turn into that one forgettable character everybody hates. With those few mechanical notes out of the way, let's talk about how to create a convincing character, shall we? In terms of role-playing games, the point is to have the player assume the role of the main character or characters, to experience your game's world through them, and to learn about it and understand the characters. The last thing you want to do is make a bland, boring, static protagonist that just exists to fill the I'm the hero role. <laughs> Let's take a look at two quick examples, shall we? Character A here is the hero. He's got to go save the world from the evil king. He's doing this because he's the good guy. Character B is also the hero. But he doesn't like being called that. He once looked up to the evil king, but now realizes that he no longer can. Character B is fighting with himself, wanting to trust the king for who he used to be, but no longer can due to what he's become. Should character B fight the king to save the world? Is it the right thing to do? He doesn't know, but he must do something or else all hope is lost. What I'm getting at here is characters are real. They have likes, dislikes, fears, feelings, and all that good stuff. Our job as game makers is to learn those traits about our characters and let our players get to know who our characters really are. Now, I say learn because though you may fill out character bio sheet after character bio sheet, or think that your characters are so clearly defined in your head, once you start putting them in plot situations, they will change, they will adapt, and they will grow. I have a very specific example, actually. Without going into spoiler territory, there's a scene in Gaia's Melody, another epilogue, one of the games I made. My original intention for the scene was to have a nice little cutaway conversation between two of the characters, before carrying on with the section. Then, somehow, main character Akira hijacked the entire conversation, went into I'm a little crazy and I have problem psycho mode, and pretty much shut down the entire continuation of the scene. 
Now, having that happen in the actual game would have broken the entire next part, so I rewrote it closer to my original intention. But believe what you want, characters have a will of their own. The more real your characters become, the less control you have over what they actually do. So how do we make our characters real? How do we get the players to fall in love with who they are? I've already brought up a few examples in previous videos, but I'll jot them here in case you haven't seen them. Characters can have their own body language. You can only do so much with sprites, and that's fine. But are they the type to run up to a character when they're excited? Do they stand with the group or off to the side? Simple things like how you have the character move and react to situations can add to their characterization. Each character, like each person, needs their own way of speaking, which needs to appear in as much of their dialogue as possible. For example, Kachi here is spontaneous and kind of a comedic weirdo. She says what she wants and she doesn't really care if you get it or not. She likes calling people by nicknames and likes teasing people, especially Akira. But she can also be serious when it's something important to her. Now Akira, her thoughts and speech get significantly more developed throughout the guy's melody games. She starts out as a bratty kid, and her dialogue reflects this, talking about how much she hates things, or isn't going to listen to someone. The plot changes her, and she gains a much deeper understanding of life and the people she cares for. However, no amount of plot or character development can change the fact that she's a very clueless character, is far too trusting, and will do anything for the people she loves, even at the cost of her own life. What believable characters need is depth, and for the player to learn about the world and grow with the character. Now how do we get the player to feel for the characters? Let's say our game kills off a character. How do we get the player to actually care? To actually feel the pain and loss of them? Well, as mentioned above, we get them to know the character. We get them to befriend the character. But how do we do this, you ask? The short answer, make them relatable. As mentioned earlier, the character that has a reason to be doing what they're doing is much more interesting and valuable than the character that is saving the world just because they can. I find it helps to use life as a base for this. Now, people seem to have mixed feelings on this. Say, using people you know in real life, or experiences you've had as game concepts. I have to do that to make it believable to me! Now you don't just want to copy-paste real things that happen to you into the game, of course. But drawing inspiration from things you've gone through will at least give you a good starting point for characters and plot. Heck, most of my characters are based on, or at least inspired by, people I've known in real life. They're obviously their own characters, but the ideas that invented them came from things that were close to me. So how do we make our characters relatable in-game? Let's look at an example, shall we? In the first part of my guy's melody let's play, I got called out for using a very cliché trope. In this scene, big sister character Echo talks to little sister character Akira about their parents' shrine and how it's important to them since it belonged to their deceased parents. Akira thinks it's stupid, and that they shouldn't bother with it. Echo gets mad, rage quits, and tells her to leave. The cliched trope in question was, we're orphans, pity us. The thing is, that wasn't what the scene was about at all. It's mentioned in one line in passing, and as much as people pity characters in those situations, it wasn't a focus worthy of the player's attention here. The point of the scene was to create a relatable situation for the player. Think about it. Have you ever had a fight with your older sibling, friend, or parent? Because they talked to you like they knew everything? and told you to do things their way? And you, likely being a spoiled brat at the time because we're all like that at some point or another, got angry and told them off? Told them to let you be you? That their ways weren't important to you? It's an experience many people have, and while they might not think about it at the time, it'll bring them just a little bit closer to the characters, because people like being able to relate to things, and it might also get them thinking. These characters have problems, I'd like to see if it gets resolved. Now in this case, the context of the scene is made much more interesting after you find out certain plot points about the characters, but that's spoilers and not really too relevant right now. Continuing with pitying the characters, people like seeing characters they can sympathize with. Perfect characters, well, are boring. If they don't have problems they need to overcome, why are we watching their story? I find it's a good practice to make characters suffer a bit. Not necessarily some sort of earth-shattering emo backstory, but as long as the character is trying to do something, has a goal they're striving for, or needs to climb out of some kind of despair death pit at some point, it can go a long way. Additionally, this can be incredibly helpful when writing antagonists. That is, the bad guys. I've always found the main villain in games hard to write. I have a hard time relating to them, even in mainstream games. I always find myself asking, 
Why are you evil? Why are you trying to take over the world? What's your motivation? Why do you care? How did you get so powerful? What are you going to do after you take over the world? Tax everyone to death? It's a good idea to think about how you want the player to feel about the villain. Thinking about why he's the villain, how he got there, and why he's doing what he's doing. Most importantly, what he expects after he's finished. Making the player pity his or her circumstance can make them much more believable. But it's also fun just to have a super crazy villain every now and then that you can't really take seriously. Until he destroys the world or something. It depends on the kind of game. But an okay game can gain a lot of momentum just by having an interesting villain. I believe I've gone through the main points I wanted to list, so let's take a quick sec to talk about some ways to think about these and get good at them. When thinking up a character, think of how they would act in specific situations. First day of school, how would the character react? Would they be nervous? Would they even care? Character is told something unfortunate has befallen a close friend. Do they get angry? Are they sad? Are they secretly the one who done it? I personally enjoy thinking up nonsense scenes. Just to see if the team was put in that situation for some reason, what would happen? If your character dialogue feels forced, try writing random scenes between the characters where they just talk. These don't have to be added into the game, but if they turn out well, you could always include them as extra dialogue. Just make sure your characters are more than a character type and a job class, and you're off to a good start. On the subject of character dialogue, make sure your characters actually talk to each other. And it doesn't always have to be about the plot. Something that still bothers me in the older Final Fantasies was how many characters they give you versus how many actually talk to each other. You're all supposed to be one big happy team trying to save the world, and this immersion breaks when you realize half your party hasn't spoken to each other outside of subbed out party actor text boxes in plot related cutscenes. Not even a, hi, I'm insert name. I helped the party once and am now going to save the world. Oh, hello, I am insert name. I am also a character who helped the party once and am now going to save the world. N. Love your characters. <laughs> this is my most important rule. If you don't care for them, if you don't love them, then you have absolutely no right to expect anyone else to. Game making, especially indie game making, is about passion. If the player doesn't feel like love and dedication went into making it, you'll have an okay game at best. If someone asks you about your game and characters, and the best response you have is, it's a game with four heroes that go on a quest to, you've lost them. So try your best with every project you attempt, and have fun doing it. It will show through your game, and it will be awesome. If you'd like to see more ways to implement extra character interaction, I've got a few tutorials over here. But for now, thanks for watching. Until next time, see you later, gamers!